So this first example I want to show is uh, working with kind of a very simple granular synthesis. So what it does is it just plays a very small loop of a sound file. Um, what I'm going to be able to do, though, is have a very simple granular patch uh, and then just multiply it many times and control it with each finger. So uh, unlike a lot of other granular synthesizers where you kind of have to build in a lot of mechanism to um, spread out the grains or change their position or have them move around, uh, you, instead of programming that stuff, you just do it with your hands. So this is sort of uh, granular synthesis turned into sculpture, clay, putty, whatever. Um, whatever metaphor you want to use, uh, it's interactive. So uh, let's take a look at the patch. Um, what I'll first do is give you an example, and then I'll take you through the patch so we understand what the mechanism is and the strategy for getting the Morph API data in and making use of it. All right, so let's switch to this view. And um, you can see the patch looks very simple. So the first thing I need to do is record uh, just some input. So this, what we're using is uh, just a memory, um, some audio loaded into memory. We could load a sound file in here if we want, but with granular, I kind of find voices are a nice way to sort of give an example of it. So. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so now I've got my counting there. And let's try a finger. All right, I'll turn it up. Um, so, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so you can see on this y-axis, uh, I'm just scrubbing through the file. Uh, on the x-axis, I control the pitch. And then my uh, pressure is sort of changing the window, the sort of the the size of that sample, how much we're listening to. So if I have a very light touch, it's a very small window. Three, three, so I'm four, hearing more of the sound three, file three, as I press harder. Three, now let's get multiple fingers involved. Utter chaos, it's beautiful. So already, um, I'm just having fun and ignoring everybody out there. Um, so how does this work with the Sensel object? So to get started with the Sensel object, let's get familiar with the package manager. Uh, many of you are probably already familiar with that, and that's in the file menu, um, packages, and then just search for Sensel, and you'll see this come up, and then you just install the package, and it installs the help files and a couple objects. Um, one object is the Sensel, object which gives you contact info. Um, let's take a look at that, what that looks like. So I'll go ahead and open the help file, hold down option and click on it. And um, what it outputs is a big dictionary. So I'll take a look at a single contact here. And you can see we're getting all of this information about one single contact, X, Y, and force, which is a lot of time like, yeah, that's the the bare minimum of what we want. Um, but there's also area, so the sort of fatness of your contact. So if I press three, press harder, three. usually gives you a bigger area, but you can also have a light touch with a big area. So you look at the area uh, is uh, around 400 with a low force. Um, there's the area which is about the same, but uh, also a low force. It's a smaller area, sorry. So 
you know, you can sort of, they're not completely orthogonal, but you can make a distinction. And that may be interesting. You also get um, information about sort of the ellipse that's formed from the pad and the contact, and it gives you an orientation. You can see this value here is. This uh, orientation is sort of a sort of rotation figure uh, metric. So there's a bunch of information like the box, the and then all the delta information is how much changing uh, gives you um, the peak values for a particular contact. It gives you the contact ID. Also interesting um, is. Uh, let me reset the view here. Um, is that when you have two contacts, you know, their ID does one and two. Uh, when you release one, you still maintain that two ID. So that's also pretty interesting and from an interaction standpoint. So I'm taking all that data and breaking it up. It comes out as what's called a dictionary in Max, which is kind of like a very complicated list, almost a database. Um, I also use this nice little abstraction. There's kind of a hole, a bug in the uh, implementation of the Sensile object that it doesn't tell you when you release. So this little uh, thing, this create zero force, thank you Loudon uh, from Berkeley College of Music. Um, he, he sent this over as a little fix. Um, so you get release information. Um, and then I just send all this data to this send morph. And uh, that's received in whatever I you know, need to control. So this is the poly object. If you're familiar with Max, um, you'll know it as a way to sort of open a particular patch many times. So when I see this poly A buffer 8, it's opening this A buffer patch uh, eight times. In my, and so that gives me eight contacts. And uh, each one is exactly the same, but we get a little index that lets us know which instance we're working with to make them unique. And then that's where I sort of parse all the information from the dictionary. So you can see here's my receive morph. Um, I'm just sending it from one place, and then I unpack all of that, and uh, I get the x, y, force, and I have, I'm not using the deltas. Um, and you can see the x value here is changing. Um, and then I scale that, so everything's in millimeters, so I want to make it um, so that it actually makes sense to whatever I'm controlling. So in this case, it's uh, x is pitch, so it's negative 12 to 12 times, um, and y is the location in milliseconds. Um, it's a 5,000 millisecond buffer. And then the force I'm using to scale the window. So again, it's a millisecond window. And then I just apply all of that to a simple groove object um, using some time stretch stuff. So you can hear that it's not the best granulator. There's a lot of clicks and artifacts. Um, but for the sake of example, it, it simplifies things and it makes it very easy to, to demonstrate the idea. Um, if you really wanted to get into doing granular synthesis, there's a lot of other things um, that can help you. Look up Nathan Wolex objects, or you can just use a buffer and some basic max patching around that. Um, and then that all of each contact is coming out here, so I have you know all of the audio from those eight contacts coming out of Poly, and then I can control the volume and send it out to you and play my musical masterpiece. And of course, um, if you want to expand it, you can start playing around with beep and start adding effects and things like that. Uh, so that is kind of like the first simple example of using multiple contacts on a simple max patch um, and using the X, Y, and force, and then generating complexity from something that's fairly elementary. <laughs> Yeah.